welcome to e pg part sala under the subject of indian culture we have the paper prehistoric and protohistoric cultures of india under this module we have a few modules dedicated to iron age and the megaliths this particular module is dedicated to the megaliths and their regional variants in south india this module was written by dr sri kumar menon of manipal university i am selva kumar from department of epigraphy and archaeology tamil university presenting this module coming to the megaliths of southern india we have seen several types in the earlier modules we have also seen what are types and how they vary region to region in this particular module we will look into the distribution of the megalithic types in different parts of india we also will look into the certain specific peculiar or unique types which are found in southern india mainly in kerala we have a few types of megaliths which are very unique and they are not found in other parts of india so we will be looking into these megalithic burial types also when you look at the megalithic burials you find a lot of variations in their types as well as structure when you look at these form you can notice that certain cultural factors have influenced these formation of the types so we can understand what cultural factor caused these changes when we closely analyze them that is why archaeologists focus on understanding the types and its variation and also its distribution when we look at the megaliths of india i already mentioned that we find them in parts of india mainly kumaon and himalayas and also in central india and in peninsular india in peninsular india we are finding this megaliths in large number we have uh, these megalithic burial distributed from nagpur to kanyakumari continuously almost the burials of maharashtra are distinct in nature we have several burial types such as cis burials pit burials dolmens in the region of maharashtra then coming to south we have karnataka which has rich varieties of burial all across the state we have cis burials dolmens dominating karnataka because karnataka is rich in granite and other rock formation we find lot of cis burials as well as dolmens in addition to various forms coming to andhra pradesh we also have here a lot of burial types like karnataka here we have cis burials dolmens in large number in addition to that in the riverine deltas we also find urn burial sarcophagus these are the common burial types actually we can't generally summarize the dominant types because we need to do a detailed study on the frequency of these burials mainly in the hilly areas and the areas where we have rocks and boulders people preferred this cis burials as well as dolmens in the deltaic areas where we have only clay formations people preferred urn burials and also sarcophagus sometimes we also find urns and also sarcophagus in the cis burials or other forms of burials in addition to that pit burials are also very common coming to tamil nadu we have several burial types we have in the areas adjacent to andhra and karnataka cis burials and dolmens very much resembling andhra and karnataka region and these burials are found almost all along the western part of 
Tamil Nadu. You find here and there chess burials and dolmens. However, they are more concentrated in the northern part of Tamil Nadu. Like Andhra Pradesh, in the deltaic region of Tamil Nadu, we have a lot of urn burials. In fact, urn burials are more common than any other forms of burials. Probably because of the availability of clay, people found that it was easier to make urns and these urns were used in the burials. In the hilly areas of Tamil Nadu, we find dolmens and also chis burials in large number. Coming to Kerala, we have very interesting situation. Actually, Kerala is divided into three geographical zones. We have the hilly areas up covering the parts of Western Ghats. We have the midland which largely has laterite deposit and then we have coastal areas. In these three different landscapes, we find large varieties of burials and sometimes they are very distinct to a particular region. In the hilly areas of Kerala, we have dolmens dominating the scenario. Some areas we also find cis burials. This hilly areas of Kerala has forest. You may find these dolmens atop hills in the remote areas. Many of the sites of the Keralas have not been uh, still identified. You find the similar situation also in the Tamil Nadu part of the Western Ghats, in Andhra Pradesh and also in the hilly areas of Karnataka you find dolmens frequently. Coming to the middle part of or the middle zone of Kerala you have laterite dominating. It is in this landscape you find lot of peculiar burial types. Coming to the coastal area of Kerala, the same situation what prevails in Andhra and Karnataka and also in Tamil Nadu prevails. In the coastal regions we find more of urn burials. We can well understand that the distribution of clay caused the formation of more urn type of burials in this particular region. This particular image shows you some of the peculiar megalithic types of Kerala. The megaliths at Ariyanur, they are spreading like the mushroom which you see after the rainy season. They are called Kodakal. Interestingly, we don't have similar burial types in other parts of southern India. That is why we call them as very peculiar to Kerala. In the image at the bottom, you see at the site of Kodakallu Parambu and also at uh, Cheraman Parambu, we see different varieties of peculiar burials, what is described as multiple hood stone. They are also very much found only in Kerala. We need to ask why people were producing such distinct burials. Maybe it is something to do with the local geology and also the perception of the people. We can't attribute everything to the geological factors. We can't just say that people produce certain things just because of geological factors. If we go for such kind of interpretation, we will be really missing the point. Actually, people also have their own cultural creativity. I think it is the cultural creativity or the cultural conception that caused the variation in the burial types. If you take all the megalith forms of South India, you can see that 80% of them are very similar, but 20% of them are very distinct and they mark the cultural characteristics of a particular region. That is how we have to interpret these variant of megalithic burials in Kerala. What you see in this image is a dolmen at Malayapalli in Andhra Pradesh. What makes this dolmen distinct from others is the absence of slabs on the all sides. Normally in the case of dolmens we find regular slabs and then on top there is capped stone. Here people have used small blocks of stones as pillars and they have created this particular dolmen. Again, if you notice, this dolmen is found on the dry 
rock surface we don't have any remains inside we don't know whether really people placed the burial remains which were later washed off by the rain activities however it seems to be very interesting and distinct similar burials are also found in other parts of south india but they are not very common in the hills certain areas they preferred this kind of dolmens again we have to ask why people erected this was this meant for one particular individual was it really a burial at all was it really just a memorial or if it has something to do with other cultural activities these kinds of questions we are not able to answer as of now because we don't know their real significance this is another dolmen like burial at madhavaneri in andhra pradesh here also you can see they have used different kinds of system here they don't use the slab structure here they have just placed some loose pieces of rock and they have supported the dolmen this is found commonly here why we are showing this particular images to show you how these endemic forms are important how they are distinct from these commonly occurring forms this is another important megalithic form in the megalithic forms we also have certain peculiar anthropomorphic figures anthropo actually refers to human being certain megalithic forms look like human beings when you look at them far away from far away you may mistake them as for a human being already i mentioned that the menhirs are standing tall probably they might have been produced for the dead heroes who stood tall in the society by protecting the people from enemies these anthropomorphic figures are also important because they are peculiar they are not found commonly we don't know why people produce such anthropomorphic figures probably these people contributed something important to the society and they saw them as a kind of humans even after their death that is why they wanted to create these kind of human like figures in the rock rather than just creating a burial the shape is very important in the study of types when you have just a burial structure as a dolmen or any other thing as a chest or just a menhir without any shape you will treat it as a kind of a, a figure as a kind of symbol but when you have a burial in the form of a human being you are bringing an organic element to the particular figure you are treating as a human being probably by creating this kind of anthropomorphic figures people thought the dead person could be kept alive in these stone forms this particular anthropomorphic figure resembles a female you can see the components of female figures here and it is found at tottigutta in andhra pradesh it is one of the unique figures in south india you can see another view of the anthropomorphic figure at tottigutta from andhra pradesh it is lying on the ground these are the unique anthropomorphic megalithic types of south india this is another interesting burial type it is also a rare type which is not found commonly in south india this is found at palam near kallur in chitur district of andhra pradesh you have here at one end a dolmen like figure a dolmen like structure and then in front you have double horn like a structure this sometime may resemble a porthole so there is something significant attached to this why people created such unique types we also give lot of titles or lot of valuable objects to important persons in the society probably people felt a person who had contributed lot to the society who had achieved so much in this life should be remembered forever he is something unique he or she is something distinct so his or her burial should be distinct from other that is why people perhaps created these kind of unique burials unless 
we have a written record or written document that specifies why people created or unless we have some oral tradition or living tradition that explains why people created such unique burials we may not be able to understand why people produced such unique burials what we can do is only speculate and give our own interpretations this is another important figure of a megalithic burial found adjacent to a circle that was excavated by archaeological survey of india it is found at the site of motur in tamil nadu here you can see an anthropomorphic figure or sometime it is also resembles some of the buddhist symbol you can see two arms like resembling a bird sometime you can see a human figure also in this this was found in the outer layer of the stone circle it is very interesting indeed we don't know why they planted this particular we don't know if it was really part of this megalithic burial however we can certainly say the burial belonged to a person who did something unique to the society that is why they gave a unique design to this particular megalithic burial such kind of burials are not found very pre- frequently this is another burial and the associated monument at the site of udayanatham in tamil nadu you can see here this resembling the srivatsa symbol somewhat resembling the earlier motur image also we don't know again why this was produced and the local people call this as visiri parai visiri means hand fan in tamil so that is why it resembles the visiri that is why local people call this as visiri parai this is also a unique type in tamil nadu only two sites have produced such unique burial types other sites do not have so there is some special significance attached to this particular burial type this is another burial type from karnataka at the site of kumati here you can see this particular burial monument actually resembling a person who is spreading out his hand you can see there is another one there are two examples here which are very interesting and important the, this actually resembles a human being in a standing posture you have the head very clearly marked these are some of the unique megalithic burial types of south india they convey some important meaning which we are not able to understand at this stage coming to the kerala we have lot of interesting and unique burial types kerala is now described as god's own country kerala is very unique in the sense it has lot of trees and plants it is greener because kerala receives very high rainfall throughout the year because of this kerala enjoys a salubrious climate and also it is green everywhere kerala has several backwaters and it has rich biodiversity when compared to other states of india naturally the megalithic burials that these people produced are also very distinct in nature here we will look into some of the megalithic burial types of kerala we have in this particular image a rock chamber displayed in the left and then the port hole displayed in the center and in the right we have multiple rocket chambers in the right here we can see the diversity of these burials so kerala megaliths as i mentioned earlier are very unique because they have distinct burial types as well as their shapes are very distinct that is why we call them as very endemic or distinct forms we have evidence of stone alignment in kerala in the bison valley however this particular form is not very common only few examples are found in kerala a few examples have also been found in uh, karnataka so stone alignments should be considered as a very endemic form and they are limited to few sites kerala megaliths as we mentioned earlier have lot of similarities with the other region especially the cis burials the urn burials and the dolmens are very common but 
only certain burial types like kudakal and topikal are very distinct and they are confined to kerala kerala has lot of laterite rock because of the high rainfall laterite has been formed in many parts of kerala and it is more frequently found in the mid zone region people cut laterite and use it for various purposes for the construction of houses for the construction of temples and laterite has been used probably from the prehistoric times because of the use of laterite you have distinct shapes of megalithic burials appearing in kerala what are the endemic or unique forms of kerala megaliths we have rocket cave which is actually a cave burial we have kudakkal umbrella stone kuda in malayalam means umbrella we have topical hat stone topi means hat we have multiple hood stone which has multiple hood like formation all around facing the center these types have evolved in response to the nature of the raw material available for construction in kerala laterite rock is very soft when freshly exposed and it hardens upon prolonged exposure to the atmosphere this happens mainly due to the dehydration thus it is amenable to be scooped and shaped into subterranean chamber because of this reason you find more rocket chambers in kerala and also in the mid region of kerala it is very difficult to find granite rocks because the old granite bedrock is completely covered with laterite if you want to find granite rock you have to scoop several feet of laterite to find the granite rock that is why people prefer to use the laterite which is frequently available in the area for the construction of the burials that is why we have these unique shape again when we look at the shapes of these burials we can't consider them as completely unique if you look at the kodakal you can notice some kind of similarity with the dolmen so we should consider kudakal as a variant of dalman again when we make this interpretation it is our own or archaeologists or historians interpretation we don't know what really people of the ancient period thought why they designed this particular form in a particular way did they also consider this as a variant of dalman found elsewhere or they really gave the meaning of something different as an umbrella or something to this particular form we do not understand therefore we need to be very careful when we interpret these kind of endemic forms here in this case what you see in this image is actually a laterite rocket cave you can see they have scooped the laterite rock which is soft at the time of carving and later on hardens and they have created chambers this is found below the surface you can see here a pillar like feature in one of the images and also a bench probably they felt the rocket cave should not cave in sometime if they carve the upper surface too much and if the wall becomes very thin it can easily cave in that is why people gave a pillar like feature in addition bench this kind of bench like feature is also found in the dolmens and cis burials sometime in the uh, andhra and also karnataka and tamil nadu along with the dolmens you also find something called a bench on which certain grave goods are placed grave goods are actually offerings given to the dead people interestingly you can see the concept of bench has been imitated in this particular rocket cave and they have cre- beautifully created a bench so you can understand how they were you know introducing the architectural concept into these caves this is another view of a rocket cave here you can see a chamber like feature actually passage to get into this rocket chamber you need a access 
that is why they have cut a pit out of that and within the pit they have given an entrance opening you can enter into the chamber through this opening interestingly they have given a recess this is something like an entrance to a house when you build a house you place lintel as well as an entrance point where you can attach doors to it the same kind of recess has been he given here which is very interesting so basically they are imitating the concept of house house for the living and house for the dead we don't know if they really meant this to close the opening we don't know if they placed any wooden plank to close the entrance we don't find any evidence sometimes we do find stones covering this generally we don't know why they gave this particular recess probably people did not want soil or the other filling to get into the cave and affect the chamber in which uh, the dead lived so they gave this for closing the rocket chamber here we see the images of more rocket chambers you can see in the left they have created steps to access to the main chamber so they have done everything with a plan they have a main chamber and then they have a pit like feature and they have steps to get into the burial chamber we do not know if this particular chambers were reused periodically whether they create created the chamber and buried the dead or buried some of the select bones of the dead and then closed or they kept it closed and then periodically deposited the bones and finally they closed it we have no idea the presence of the steps are very interesting maybe it is meant for the people who went inside and then placed the grave goods and the bones or possibly they thought the dead had to enter into the chamber through these steps you also see here the bench very beautifully carved and in the next image on the right you can see the opening on top here you can see this comparing well with the dolmens dolmens have opening on the sides here they have given the opening on the top most of the rocket caves have opening on the top because they are found below the surface they have given the opening on the top interestingly some of the rocket chambers of the kasar hoard they have beautiful lids covering the opening on the top the rocket caves have two openings one in the front as an entrance one on the top probably imitating the portholes of the dolmens you can see they have very carefully carved here with the beautiful opening as well as the curvature because laterite is bound to break if you give sharp angle because of this they may have given the curvature more at this particular chamber you can see in this case several chambers from a central courtyard like feature and we don't know why they created so many chambers here was it meant for one individual or was it meant for several individuals the very presence of multiple chambers indicate that they were carving different chambers for different individuals it could well be a part of a family vault mainly meant for a related members and it is a likely possibility here again we see a entrance as well as the front court and the circular opening on top they are all very beautifully carved and normally you find them closed only after the excavation we can see them that means people after creating these burials completely closed and then sealed the opening and they are exposed due to accidental discoveries as well as when archaeologists excavate them for recovering the important evidence but whenever you find stone slabs in this area you can understand there is something beneath that is how we can track the uh, rocket chambers presence in kerala like landscape which is completely covered with vegetation this is another beautiful and unique 
megalithic burial type which is called kodakkal or kodakkal it shapes resembles an umbrella traditional umbrella of kerala which is made of palm leaves and also it resembles mushroom in shape the interesting thing is the top capstone is like a bun in the shape of a semi circular or semi oval on top and flat bottom here we don't know why they created such burial type as i already mentioned is it resembles the dolmen types found in other parts of south india here we have four stones called clinostats instead of arthostats of the megaliths four clinostats placed in four direction and forming a chamber inside and then there is a capstone on top if you remove the capstone and then remove the clinostats you can see a structure inside you can see the chamber inside in which burial goods were placed its shape is very interesting because it is not found elsewhere they have created the chamber just by using the clino stats which is like you know you can open this like the way you can open an orange you remove the clino stats you can see a chamber in the case if you remove the uh, single segments of orange fruit you may not see space inside but here they have placed the clino stats in such a way that it creates a chamber inside inside in a way it resembles dolmen very much but you know why they created such a shape maybe it is an imitation of dolmen dolmen you know to produce a dolmen you need to cut the slab into rectangular fashion but cutting a slab in a rectangular fashion in such large size in laterite is not possible because the slab may crack or it may break therefore they created this specific design and then you know they also they created the capstone such a oval shape because laterite if you cut as a square or rectangle in such a large size it may not withstand maybe because of this reason they created this particular design it could be resembling the shape of a umbrella meant for an individual from higher social status that is why they intentionally created this particular shape here you can look into the details of this particular kodakkal you can see the capstone how it is beautifully placed on the clino stats on the right hand side you can see several examples they have been very beautifully designed such a way to take the capstone on top here you have another important burial type called topical this is called hat stone in english because it resembles a hat traditional hat worn and it is directly lying on the surface you can see some similarities between this as well as the kodakkal the top stone of the kodakkal that is the capstone is exactly something similar to this particular topical or hat stone in addition the hat stone also has certain holes we don't know whether it was intentional or it emerged out of the weathering pattern or they may have used it for certain purpose we have no idea why these kind of hollow depressions or holes are found but sometime these holes could be resembling the portholes of the dolmen or the opening in the rocket cave probably people felt any of the burial should have a kind of opening it should not be just like a chamber if it is like a chamber probably they felt it could be like arresting a person and probably they did not want to do this for the persons they had lot of affections here we have another important megalithic form called multiple hood stones in this case you see several hood stones 
placed all around facing the center and they form a chamfer but you don't have any capstone here that is why it is different from the kodakallu which we discussed earlier therefore it is interpreted as a distinct burial type here we see another important uh, endemic form that is uh, alignment which is found mainly in kerala and also in karnataka and not many sites are reported here here you can see rows of stones planted for some purpose we don't know its significance and its meaning is also not clear but we are sure that they were planted intentionally to convey some meanings or some purpose what you see here is actually a dolmen dolmens from two different region one on the left is from tamil nadu one on the right is from karnataka here you can see the slabs planted as a circle or in different direction we don't commonly see such slabs planted as circle with a curved end at many sites only few sites have this particular form we don't know why people did this kind of decoration maybe it can be the expression of the aesthetic activities of the artist or the people who created this burial or it had some significance some symbolic significance probably it belonged to a person who had a higher sort of social status or who had an important role in the society at that point of time sometimes the megalith forms are also imitated that's what you see here in this picture a menhir made out of laterite rock is found in karnataka so these kind of forms are also sometime imitated in various raw materials i hope you understood the concept of megalithic forms the megalithic types and their distribution in different parts of south india and the variations in the structure as well as in design if you have any queries or any questions or any doubt you can consult the e text you can also refer to the powerpoint presentation in addition you should also discuss this issue with the scholars you can also refer to research articles and books so that you can get a better understanding thank you